This is the Jenkins Docs office hours for the 2nd of November, 2020. Let's take a look at the agenda and onward we go. So topics that I've got, progress on pull requests, Docker changes to use the official Docker image, Hacktoberfest results, what's next after Hacktoberfest. Uh, any other topics that any of you would like to put on the agenda? Let's see. Oh, and we had one. I had notes on one. We were going to consider doing a demonstration of tables to divs. Where is that? Oh, exactly. Oh, here it is. This from today. So if you're okay with that, let's put that here. Demonstration of Jenkins 2.264. Tables to divs. UI improvements. If nothing else, let's go ahead and start the start the topics. So progress on the Jenkins.io pull requests. So please to note that we've got 56 issues that have been closed in the last month. So during Hacktoberfest, 72 pull requests that were merged during Hacktoberfest and three new issues that were reported from in part from people helping with that. We were previously at 36 or 37. So we've kept parity with our number of open pull requests and our number of open issues has dropped by over 40. We were at least at 156 at the start of the month and we're now down to 115. Wow. So go ahead, Meg. That was it, just wow. Said, what did I say? I said it was 56 issues in the last month. Yes, 56 issues closed. Seventy-two pull requests merged. Yeah, so excellent, excellent result. We do need a blog post. Uh, that was an item here on Hacktoberfest results. But in order to get that, we need the data to highlight it. And Oleg had done a bunch of work on the data to assure that it's accurate. Just need some time to go collect it and highlight it. Any questions there or concerns? Any things, hey, we, we did this, we should have done that instead. Uh, uh, Mark, there is some kind of event, uh, for example, uh, to uh, retrospective, just uh, uh, to map uh, the learning things during the event, to use the next one. Like the, for example, the, the guy would help us with the, another way to use vhost file, uh, how to handle it to issues PR, something like that, to make some reports to the next members in next events too. All the blog, uh, the blog post will embrace everything. Oh, oh, I see. That's a good suggestion, right? So. Yeah, I think I think I see what you're suggesting that we should offer special thanks to, in this case, it was that is Tobias uh, for the improvement in the redirects in exactly. redirects definition. Yeah. 
and thanks to new contributors for the redirects. And thanks to Jonathan for identifying the need for the redirects. <laughs> nice, thank and you. explain what the redirects are, because most people won't have any idea what you're talking about. Yeah, actually, very good. That is a good one. That there, there are there are many different facets of this particular project, that each one of them highlights an attribute of working in a community that we work better and by helping together. Good. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of this, did we come out with our most of the good first projects completed? Oh, I mean, no. If somebody new comes in, no, there's still plenty of stuff there. If somebody new pops up and wants. That's actually, that's a, another good thing that we should highlight. Because if we look at the number of good first issues that are still open, no one assigned to them, I think we'll see 20 or 30 still. So we have 19 open of those 19 good first issues. It looks like roughly nine or 10 of them have someone assigned. So we've got at least 10 good first issues still open. Okay. Well, in this case, we can decide, for example, just to close every 10 issues with just one PR or give uh, or let them to their next members. What do we need to do? So I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Could you ask it again, Jonathan? Yeah, it's because we open all these issues for new members. So the event is ended. So maybe we need, can uh, close all then with just one PR or just to leave for the next, next members. Oh, oh, that's a good question. Okay, should we, should yeah. we should do we, a yeah, single resolve open redirect for a resolve open redirect issues a number of them won't be resolved trivially but redirect the open redirect issues if we chose to say hey we're going to look at these and each one that says redirect so this one this one this one we could choose to do a single pr that would resolve all those redirect issues in one in one exercise yeah i like that i think that actually would would have the positive of resolving the easy ones we we did we did good first issue and now these are relatively trivial things that we can do and then it still leaves the ones that, that really have a migration in them as visible to users as visible to people good it's a option okay because uh, the the main objective was the event so Maybe it's a good point. Right. Good. Very good. The top, the Toby X. Uh, propose it's already in use or not? It's under appreciation of Jenkins. Sorry, their dude. proposal to the host change. Toby X proposes some change in our V hosts. It's already in use or not? It's in. It's already been merged and in oh. use as far as I know, right? I'll have to double check it. It's definitely been merged. Let's check to see if it's been deployed to production. So that's Jenkins GitHub, oops, Jenkins GitHub, this one. And we'll just change to this one. Okay, Jenkins Infra and pull requests. So his pull request was right here. I guess we'll just have to look for author. And nope, apparently that's not the 
I oops I X. There we go. Okay. Yes, so it was merged two days ago. Now let's look at the other closed ones because there should be one pull request which says go to production five days ago, 13 hours ago. So yes, it is in production. So so the the redirects from his those redirects are merged in production. Uh, you, you know, do you know how to use the new rules? Uh, I, I didn't see it. I have sure, yeah, let's let's take all he did. What he was able to do was delete the... Um, For example, if I, I want to add a, a new redirect, what I need to do now? You would do the same as we did before, but instead of using two lines to do it, you use one line. Let's see if I can find that PR again. PR closed. Oh, we've got to do author. Oh, okay, come on. Uh, there is a blank space uh, after, yeah. There we go. Okay, so this one. Reduce wiki exporter special case to one rule. What he did was he changed all of these individual rewrite conditions that were in there as special cases for the Jenkins Wiki exporter into a single, a single rewrite condition at the top of the file with a rewrite rule. Okay, so if I need to add a new page, what? You just do this rewrite rule thing like we always did before. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so, really so it's it's, it's much easier. As an example, here's one that's open Easy. for me. I've got this one open to redirect the, the page about ping threads to Jenkins.io, and this is all that it takes. One line, and you'll recognize that's exactly the line that we've always used. Yeah. Now, in addition, okay. During the Hacktoberfest period, I'm actually kind of proud of this one. Um, Gavin Mogan and I created an automated test script that checks that vhost.conf file for correct contents for a number of mistakes that we've been making in the past. So we now have basically a set of automated tests that check that our file is consistent. Mm. That needs to go into your blog too. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. Right. Let's let's put that right. Automated checks. Right. It also illustrates the principle that we talked about, but don't live by when you find problems, fix the tests. Right. That's good. So you can pull out your subtle soapbox since I know that. Yeah, just good. just what people want to hear is me me beating on the beating on the pulpit of write more tests. Okay, good. But it's it's what but it's I mean it's more useful when you just say you should write more tests to say here's a place where we wrote more tests as everybody should. Right. Yes, very good. Okay. Actually that's that's a pretty good story to tell people. Thank you. Anything else you think we should highlight on Hacktoberfest? So Jonathan and Vlad and Meg, are you willing to be co-authors on this? I'm happy to draft it and we'll just make it a, the four of us as co-authors. I'm happy to edit it, but I'm contributing nothing here, but whatever. <laughs> edits edits are, are high contribution. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Here, my, my uh, keyboard has decided to do something really odd. What was it doing? There we go. Let's try that again. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else on progress on pull requests? 
So Jonathan, you, I think, had asked relative to a retrospective, are there things that we should improve? Do we know how many people actually got t-shirts or a tree? Do not, and I don't know how we would know that. We, 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 we can, by our own data, detect how many different contributions there were and may even be able to deduce how many distinct authors there were, but which, which reward they selected DigitalOcean doesn't disclose. Uh, there is some statistics, st stats about uh, who organizations help more with contributions. For example, Jenks or 100, uh, 10%, 50% of contributions get from Jenks or not? I've not, solution. I've not seen anything like that. So, so mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not aware of anything that DigitalOcean shares, uh, but would be nice. So. Let me put it this way, better tracking uh, would be yeah. nice, uh, something like our ACFEST site from May. This is that's are good for motivate people. <laughs> it's funny. It's like a game. It, exactly. Right. Yes. Okay. Maybe Jenks create a new florist on, on world. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> a we, planted, park. <laughs> we planted this many trees thanks to Digital Oceans yeah. at Overfest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, next topic then. Docker changes to use the official image. Vlad, you want to share with us a little bit how that progress has gone? Uh, yes, well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Mark, for your contribution, because I noticed that during the last week, for example, you made several pull requests, very important pull requests. But overall, what I guess is achieved on positive side is that we're using right now um, image, which is derived from official Docker image. So we can trace uh, the versions that downloads Docker images, which are uh, mentioned in our Jenkins.io documentation on download side. Uh, and we introduced this contents of Docker file, which allows uh, basically everybody to uh, use it and uh, actually, uh, well, also contribute to different, different images. Um, and uh, well, I wanted also to mention that right now we achieved this kind of using of uh, official uh, Jenkins Docker image, both on installation part of our documentation and in the tutorial part of our documentation. Um, and tutorial part right now is kind of also uh, expanding. There are four chapters of tutorial part. Uh, and uh, well, I checked, for instance, last Friday and during the weekend, uh, tutorial part on our documentation, not only simple Java, but uh, something else, and it works. Uh, but today we modified a little bit. Well, I noticed that uh, we made some modifications and uh, I can test it. I'm pretty sure the tutorial part will work. But in installation part, we removed, uh, well, some of the volume mapping parameters from installing, for instance, the home. I'm mentioning this because my intention for today, at least, was to sync tutorial part and installation part. But right now, uh, they are different. I, if I go a little bit further, uh, lower uh, on your screen. Um, yes, you can see that it is in install part. Uh, before we're using my Jenkins Blue Ocean.11, we removed uh, mapping for the home directory, which is present in tutorial part. 
And uh, the presence in the internal part explained by the necessity of using home in some of tutorials, because in some of tutorials we are not using GitHub URL, we are using local directory in the image. Uh, and uh, we mentioned home in installation part, home mapping, but it was removed over this weekend. Uh, so, <laughs> well. well uh, and, and that was, for me at least, that was intentional. So, so I didn't, I thought we shouldn't mention it. Are you thinking we should mention, use the home, home mapping even for install? See, for me, I thought this is this, no, let's go get all the way down. This, where is it? The one that maps. Oh, this is installing, sorry. Installing, we need tutorial. Sorry, more tutorials. So this is, let's use the Node.js example. It's a good choice. And so here is on Linux. Okay, this one. Yeah, so the one you're referring to is this line right here, right, Brad? Yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, well, it is needed for tutorials uh, because this is how some of tutorials are written right now. Uh, and uh, well, there is kind of plus and minuses for um, using this. Uh, I guess, well, we can rewrite, of course, tutorials, but uh, well, one uh, of the minuses I can see that we're exposing uh, our, for instance, our home directory of client machine, but I'm not sure is it really minus or not, it is kind of security concerns. Uh, my question though is, uh, well, maybe people have different opinions on that. Should we make tutorial section, at least this is what my, my intention, uh, synchronized with installation part of the do related to Docker. Because right now, uh, since you mentioned this line is missing from installation part and it uh, forces us in the current implementation to use almost identical files uh, in our documentation. So we're not really compliant to dry, don't repeat yourself principle. Uh, which is kind of uh, best practice for the documentation. Um, so uh, we can still use this almost identical files, or we can put this home mapping again in installation part, but I'm not sure if there are maybe some objections from different team members. Uh, maybe it will be, well, some security concerns they may have or not. Uh, yeah, it's, I guess, up to um, our team members to decide. Um, but this is what I noticed basically all of this uh, today <laughs> while exploring this. Uh, but overall, mm -hmm. go ahead, excuse me. Uh, yeah, but overall, I think it is a well, pretty good achievement that we are, uh, first of all, using official Docker image. We introduced the content of very simple Docker file, which allows, well, contributors, new contributors to uh, utilize this and, like, build their own images. Uh, the only thing which uh, may be further improvement uh, we're not showing how to contribute to official Docker images and releases, but it is absolutely different topic, separate topic. And I'm not really sure if we need to do this, if it is worth doing and so on. Uh, uh, yeah, this is what uh, maybe like future exploring how to actually we like showing the example of how to create Docker images, how to name it, but where to put, how to put, uh, which registry to use. I guess there is some communication going on, uh, going on right now with uh, Docker 
open source community. Uh, so maybe there will be some well, um, feedback from that communication as well. Uh, but overall, I think it is like positive thing. I'm not sure what, what everybody thinks about this, but yeah. uh, this is my impression. I have a dumb question here. Um, so this gets me if I'm a first time Jenkins user and I'm just fooling around on my own. What if then I want to go in on Monday after my successful weekend and I want to set this up for my company? I don't want this to be under my home directory, probably, right? It needs to be under. Is, is there a separate place where we discuss sort of first time setup for production for a company? Or do we just, you know, do we give it to them to play and then figure they'll figure it out from there? Is that valid? Well, my mental model was that that installing is there ready for production and tutorial is disposable. And so I thought that that was why we would justify having this difference. But I still think that the, the principle that Vlad's alluding to, the don't repeat yourself principle, is a good one. And we ought to see if we could find a way to have a single source file that conditionally has this volume magic in it when it's in tutorial context and doesn't have that, that volume magic when it's in the install context. Right. And, and I think we've done it before with ASCII, with, with ASCII doc, I believe. I think there's a way to do that with, with variable definitions that we put at the top of files to say, hey, when we in, import this file in this location, define the variable to be the empty string. When we do import it in this location, define it to be this non-empty string. I would be glad to look into this, like with yeah. uh, like more details and figure out how to do this. But yeah, my and, straight, yeah, my straightforward attempt to synchronize. I even created like branch trying to like uh, uh, make it. Uh, uh, more maintainable, the entire documentation content, uh, and so eliminate this uh, repeating files. And uh, after that, I like found out well they are not identical, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> because like during the uh, before this weekend they were almost identical, like well some minor changes not in the code but in just the word in which. Of course, it's not very well. Uh, there is a point we need to consider uh, about the dry. Uh, it's a common problem. So it uh, could uh, really happen with us. For example, if we point to another part of our documentations, we have no control with the origins chains. So, for example, you are writing a new. Uh, tutorial right now about how to use Jenkins with Docker or whatever and point for another content, another topic. So maybe one month that that origin topic changes uh, and that uh, changes invalidate your uh, uh, to write tutorial. I make me clear. So it, it's complicated. Uh, maybe we use all full descriptions in each tutorial to keep them complete. So and uh, uh, executable in the to begin to at the end. And I think I think that's the, the problem you're describing is very real. That there may be times yeah. when one part of the document describes something that's no longer accurate. I think in the case that Vlad's describing here, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a terminal window and and look at this with my favorite text editor, just a minute, because I thought that they were pretty close to each other already. So Vlad, I think these are the two files you were alluding to, um, underscore Docker and underscore Docker for tutorials. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we exactly. do our friendly local edif, it will compare the two. Okay, so here's a change, a difference in the comment for the purpose of the file and then differences in the headings, the home, the, the, the mount of home, the explanation of the mount of home, the mount of home, difference in heading levels, difference in heading levels, and that's it, good, okay. 
So, so your, your desire to not repeat ourselves echoed with my desire that I, I wanted the same thing. And right now they are quite close to each other as copies and the differences in header level, heading levels, can it be adjusted by a setting in the entry block of the file where we import this? Mm -hmm. So that, that difference we can get rid of, I think. So mm -hmm. the only difference we really have right now between those two files is that exactly the thing that you observe this mount of the home directory for tutorials. Yeah, I would be glad to look into this, Mark. And, and the reason why I thought it is a little bit, well, kind of annoying and it would be easier to maintain in case you have single file because of the comments at the beginning of both files. I think it is for both files. Uh, there is comment that if you change uh, something in one file, just make sure that it is mirrored in the other file, which is kind of uh, for any editor is, uh, yeah, kind of extra efforts. And... Yes, absolute wholehearted agreement. So if you're willing to investigate the how you use variables inside a doc files, that would be a, that would be a marvelous next step because then we could get rid of we could. Get, just throw one of the files away and just use the single file with this this conditionally defined variable at the top of some files and not at the top of others. I like that. That would be right. great. There are a couple other places like setup wizard. There is setup wizard for which is used for installation and setup wizard for tutorial, which well the content almost exactly the same, but we are using. Uh, for historical reasons, I guess, couple of files which we can just improve uh, in the future. Excellent. Yeah. Is so it worth adding a pros note after that also, though, to say that, that note if you are doing this for production, you do not want this under your personal home? Or we, we I don't certainly, know. We certainly could. There is a, there, this. This is not, it's not so much dangerous from a security perspective because they still have to authenticate to get into the Jenkins. Right. And the, the authentication is that they created the account. It is still every bit as secure. The, the reason that this is actually, for me anyway, the reason this is not a good idea in production is it will only work on agents that have access to that file system. Ah. So, so, the tutorial has you use a Git repository that is locally mounted. Right. And a locally mounted Git repository is just fine so long as you're always running on the controller. As soon as you use an agent that's on a different computer, the file system is not visible and you're stuck. Right. My concern is that somebody sets this up and the whole company is running wrong smoothly and they leave the company and right. they close their accounts and all of a sudden everything is broken. Yeah, and it and might not be trivial for them to figure that one out either. Uh, yeah, for that's... example, here in our companies have policies, so installing the home it's not an option. Uh, it depends of the company rules. So if some uh, company allow their people use the home directory, the problem is on company. It's not about the true. The I'm thinking of like smallish companies just getting started on this with somebody who's not a real sophisticate setting it up. And I don't know how much. Yeah, maybe a, a just a, a topic there uh, alerting the Meg say, for example, in productions, please don't use slash home director. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. We don't need to go into details, but. It certainly could be added to this description of that of that argument, right? It says hey, this is why we're doing this. And this number 10 here gives the description. It says, this is what's happening. And we could say, in production, don't do this. Put it in nice, mm -hmm. bold text. Yeah. And and the install guide already doesn't do it in production. So that's that seems healthy as well. Right. And if so they we're... know enough to be doing this at all, they'll that will tell them why. That will say, oh, yeah, that would. So. There is, there is. A... Another, well, approach, we can change tutorials, the content of tutorials, and use not local directory, but GitHub URL, so it will grab everything 
uh, from GitHub URLs, but uh, yeah, it depends what what people think, what is the change. In, and I just looked at one tutorial. I'm not sure how about every tutorial needs this or not, um, but yeah. Yeah, the, and for me, the at least the last time I tried to do what you were suggesting, Vlad, because I've attempted that with this particular, these three tutorials, is, oh, we, we should use the remote repository, but the explanation, particularly on different platforms and different environments, becomes much more complicated because we have to teach the user how to push changes back to their fork. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and whereas this one, all they do is do a local commit and the change is visible, even if they never learned how to do a push. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, like, since we're talking about this specific piece about Docker installation and tutorials, I noticed that uh, for Windows, before it was mentioned, Windows and Linux, the content, for instance, of our run command, right now it is a different little bit. So uh, I will also look in this and just... Mm. Well, and that's another place where I don't know how we would do don't repeat yourself because there are there are mandatory variations, but it's a good thing to check. Thanks for doing it because, for instance, this character on the end of the line that's different on Windows than it is on, but the rest of it should be the same, shouldn't it? Right, and I think it was part of installation guide where we have like little bit different content for Windows, uh, not specifically on this on this like uh, special symbol, but yeah, I think it is yeah. Uh, not not Docker and Docker, but mm -hmm. yeah. But I will take a look. Great time. So it is like some brief observations on, on this. But there is, it's also nice to have something simple. Docker itself is complicated enough and you don't want to put up too many mental blockades to somebody just trying to get started. So that's always the thing to, but then you also don't want to set them up to shoot themselves in the foot when they try to translate this. So there's the challenge. Yeah. And well, there are uh, many different ways of, to uh, motivate new contributors to uh, contribute <laughs> to the Jenkins project. And one of the ways I explored during last week, for instance, uh, as I mentioned, is using something like Cataconda tutorials mm -hmm. where they can press buttons and everything will happen. And I like put together some simplest way how to run Jenkins and uh, put it on cataconda.com and well, it worked. Uh, so it can be you know, Jenkins started, they can deploy, and they can easily, like in two steps, see the run version of Jenkins, which is running not on their local computer, but on Cataconda Cloud, kind of. Right. Uh, and we can, like, later explore this if needed, of course. Uh, but there are so many different ways where we can go. <laughs> oh, oh, I. I have one more highlight to show because we got a new tutorial last week from a contributor. In the more tutorial section, we now have Jenkins on the IBM cloud. Oh. They tell tell somebody how to deploy a Kubernetes to a Jenkins a Jenkins to a Kubernetes cluster in IBM cloud. Mm. All right, Vlad, anything else on on the Docker topic? Um, no, I think um, just main issues I mentioned. Uh, maybe there will be more issues later. Yeah. So there is still one open issue with the Node.js tutorial. And if you've got, if you're looking at it and have time, I would love, love for your, you to investigate. I could not decode myself while I was working on it last week, how to make this one work. I know it's worked before. I know it's broken now. And I don't know what port mapping we need or what other thing we need to allow us to, to use that tutorial. It, it's unique in that it, the tutorial has a running process that the user should connect to. So it's something
something like this. And I know it's worked, it worked long ago before we made the transition to, to, the, to the, the current, to the correct image. It worked with the old image, but I don't, it didn't do the diagnosis to see what was going on. Thank you, Mark. I will take a look. So we've got about 15 minutes. Would we like to talk about what's next? Do you want to see a demonstration of table to div, tables to divs? Demonstration. I go. Okay, so let's, uh, Vlad, is that okay with you? Meg, okay with yes. you if we do demo? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so here's what we've got. <laughs> and this is, let's drag this one in. And we're going to go to testing machine. Okay, so this is Jenkins 2.264. And it's actually running 30 or so agents, uh, etc. And one of the, the nice changes here is that instead of using tables to do system configuration, we're using HTML divs. They say, well, why would that matter to anybody? Well, watch what happens. So I'm going to click configure system. And as always, this is a large system. It'll take a little bit of time to open. While it's opening, I'm going to open this in a new tab. And we'll look at some other examples. So here's how the, it looked in one version prior. So notice the layout. The uh, number of executors line here spans the full width, and they are vertically aligned with each other. Uh, no. And now if, if something indentation wise happens, it does it in with these dashed lines down the edge to hint to you what's, what's being placed below that. So let's, let's compare it with the, the old system. Notice that restrict project naming has this large step over to the right. Now, if I, if I make this window, narrow. The user interface becomes fundamentally unusable with the old code. I, mm. I, I have to scroll left and right to do anything. With the new code, ah, it works. Oh, wow. The next it, point now it's the Android app. <laughs> it's what? One Android app is the next step. <laughs> okay. From I, I think I think that is a lovely <laughs> that is a lovely thought. You are way ahead of what I was thinking, but that, that's a great thought. Yes, Android app. <laughs> yes, the the UI has been adapted now so that I can actually do work in a narrower screen without having to do enormous screen adjustments. And, and it's, it's quite a treat. Now, the challenge is, this is a major, major change. This pull return request spent over a year in review and testing and fixes to various plugins. And the fix, all the fixes are not yet done. As an example, if I remember correctly, this one needs, no, maybe that one's still there. There are some of the GitHub plugins, for instance, that don't yet have all the fixes that they need for this. And so there's more to be done. Uh, yeah, here we go. We see this one right here that shows us, hey, that's not quite showing me what I need to see. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's more yet to be done, but the UI has become much, much better as a result of this. And each time we, we make these kinds of improvements, people get a better experience from the UI. Right now, exactly. 2.264 is, is being evaluated. And if we look at the evaluation comments or the evaluation feedback, it's getting 
a lot of noise here. So what you see, this cloud, 62, that says lots of people have found issues related to tables to divs. And we're seeing those as bug reports here that come in. We knew this was going to happen. It's intentional that we would do it at this release because the next LTS is that will include these changes is almost six months away. And we like that. That gives us lots of time to test and verify this in the weeklies before it becomes visible to users of the long-term support release. So it, if you find problems, please go ahead and submit bug reports, especially if you can identify the plugin that is not well behaved, beginning with 2.264, like this thing right here. And I think they're already working on exactly those. So if we, that button should not float in that location. It's a, a reminder that there's more UI work to be done. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, the team is visiting plugin by plugin, search for compatibility. compatibility. Oh. Correct. Yeah, that's what has to be done because the table layout was so, so widely used and used in such a varied way that it has to be done plugin by plugin. Plugin by plugin. Okay. Mark, so, may I so, ask? Oh, go ahead, John. No, no, please continue, Brad. Just go I ahead. wanted to ask Mark about uh, these changes that and fix that was done. Was it related only to configuration or to other places where uh, we can change the size of the screen and it may affect UI? Or is it just for configuration? It's, it's certainly most visible in configuration, but uh, it, it touches anywhere that uses, uses tables as a way to do layout of a page. So for example, I can show you one that is an example, I think of something that's not, that's in a job and still, oh wait, except not this one, sorry, I've got to have some job actually run so let's cancel the shutdown and we'll let some jobs actually run. So if we run this one, oh, it's not enabled, sorry. I have to find one that's actually ready to run. How about let's run this one. Oh, that's a poor choice. Let's run one of these. Come on. Yeah, here we go. We'll just run this one. And what's going to happen is it will after the first run is complete, when I look in the history here, in the job history, there will be a, a, a checkbox or a, a pick that would let me tag the build. And that tagging of the build used, used to use tables to do its UI layout. And because it used tables to do its UI layout, so let's look mm -hmm. at that now it would, would have been broken. So this, see this thing over here that says no tags? Notice the look of this thing with that ick. That's a, that's a, table, that's a table layout problem. Uh. And it's those kinds of things that will be visible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, yeah, now I think I think the, the challenge there is this does also touch our screenshots. If we use this an image to yep. show someone how the Jenkins UI looks, that this will change that image. And by changing that image, um, we've got to eventually get to the point of updating those pictures. 
Oops. Yeah, the layout changes, but it's not so catastrophic because the name of field is, uh, keep the same. So the people just uh, uh, realize that, oh, it's a split at on the middle and now it's line by line. So right. Maybe the impact is not so high. Well, and, and that's that's a good observation. So there are still there's still UI work to do. Adapt uh, plugins to the change, uh, and it's lower impact than a, a complete UI rewrite. So, for instance, it's not nearly as dramatic as Blue Ocean was when Blue Ocean basically abandoned all plugins, and you you couldn't figure out how to hook yourself in. So it's yeah. much much closer to the Jenkins plugin model. But there is a almost complete rewrite of the UI on going on it has been. I mean, just the tiles on the managed Jenkins page is a change, right? Well, no, see, those actually came the the changes here that were on the came a few Jenkins. months ago. Yeah, they've been. But that's what I'm saying. Over the last few months, we've had sort oh. of a, a total rewrite of the UI. Right. Yeah. So so I guess you're correct in observing that there are certainly many other ui changes i for me this was a nice improvement not so much a major rewrite it's a it's really a very attractive improvement that we switched to having tiled tiled entries here instead of one long list down vertically down the screen oh absolutely but if you've got screenshots <laughs> right you're correct yep yeah um, and the the plugin if you're looking for newer plugins that was totally changed she used to get right. the whole list and know it. So, right, good point. Yeah, that's the and and the layout there and the tagging is is new in the last several months. Yeah, correct. Right. Great work. Wonderful. We almost right. need a Hacktoberfest to just go through all the docs and look at every screenshot. And Actually, that's not a bad suggestion for a future future Hacktoberfest. Of right, because you identify I think they're places getting, where they're getting close to being done with it. I think now, right? Oh no no no! March yeah. this this will continue until at least the March LTS. So so we're at least five months away from from right. this being really really baked enough that it will be visible to users of the long term support release. Right. So maybe it's just before that that we. I don't know. But okay. All right. So we've got about five minutes left. What's next after Hacktoberfest? I've got a. I, Oleg and I were discussing this morning a proposal that we'll do. I'm going to do a quick blog post on major changes that are coming to Jenkins very soon. So I, I showed you table to divs and that one is already done. Now we've got jQuery that will be updated probably within the next three or four weekly releases. Xtreme un, Unfork is an internal compatibility issue, risk that most users should not see, but should not see any threat from it, but it's, it's widespread and likewise this a CG to Spring Boot is an internal compatibility thing. And so for the next probably four to six weeks, I'm expecting weekly releases of Jenkins will be less stable to users than they've been in the past. Hmm. Um, side to, what about the JCAST documentation? The last time I looked, the only thing useful was in the readme file for the source code is but i assume that we plan to it eventually have actual documentation on that oh i think i think there's quite a bit of documentation right now on the configuration as code plugin that's it may have been a month or two that i looked and they may have or somebody may have gotten busy in the meantime yeah let's let's take a look and see oh no that's uncommon 
Oh, there we go. Okay, I feel better. Yeah, so this is what I'm used to as the first entry for the documentation. And then if I remember correctly, they have all sorts of guides on how do you handle other things as well. So is this what you were referencing, Meg? Yeah. Okay, so that's... Yeah, this is an improvement. Before this was, you know, there was a little bit there in the link to the README file. Right, and and certainly there's still much to be done there, but we've got a link to the slide deck from Jenkins World. We've got all sorts of additional resources that are in there now. However, it's still very frequently a, a place for lots of questions about, hey, how do I do this with configuration as code? Good, well, and then, point. Yeah, and then the bigger question, and I we maybe yeah, but when do we fold this into how you configure your system? Right now we've oh. got all the old stuff on how you configure the system. And I I've been thinking in my mind that there's a point that we maybe we the first step is to go through and say note that you can also configure this with configuration as code and link to that or say, you know, that might that maybe we don't want to completely switch it because people don't upgrade that fast and and there will always be manual configuration such. Um, good question. Yeah, I, 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 it's not clear to me on that one. That's a, that's a very good question. Right, and it, I don't know. And I don't know whose it is to decide as to when we do this, but it seems like something, you know, five years from now, I don't expect to see it structured this way, maybe even three years from now. Right. So how do we get from here to there? Mm -hmm. Good. Any other topics we should address today? Just I, a quickie, I'm, where are we with the terminology updates? How many of those got done in Hacktoberfest? Uh, I think all the ones that we'd identified for Hacktoberfest got done. Okay. Let's check. So basically, master is pretty much gone from Jenkins IO and uh, whitelist. I think master is gone. I don't know. We didn't do any tickets for the slave to agent transition, if I remember. But I think all we did was tickets for master to controller. So I'm I'm pretty sure that Jenkins IO probably still has some references to the word slave. Those and, are mostly cleared up, though. My my experience oh. has been most of them on screenshots, oh, where okay. the soft a lot of, there is software that is still. In fact, there's been fairly new software that's used slave. Right, right. We've we've still got lots of places in the source code where we need to where strings that use the word slave need to be need we need to be fixed. Correct. Right. We have well we have and we have stuff in the UI that where there's still where slave still shows up a couple of places. Right. including new stuff so i think also in our documentation sometimes there is a reference to master as github branch and there is separate mm -hmm. effort inside github open source community what are we doing do about this. is github master changing there that well so command line git has now stated that they eventually intend to adjust their default but they haven't done it yet. But when you run the Git for Windows installer today, it already asks you, what would you like as your new default primary branch? Uh, many mm -hmm. people use master before. You could choose main or trunk or, and they offer several suggestions. Now that just barely arrived in, I think it was Git for Windows 2.29 within the last month. But but it is it is arriving. So right. Um, GitHub making that change is, I suspect, even bigger, right? Because they've got a oh, lot yeah. of places they'll have to worry about. Really, really. And that they're making it flexible so it isn't like it's a straight replace this for that. Right. Yeah. All right. And the question is, though, what, are, what is the Jenkins project going to use? I assume that we're going to choose one term to use throughout the project, right? And not even been discussed yet. Yeah. I, I don't know. And I think it's a good question. I, I have no idea. Right now, I think we've got enough issues with this one and this one 
master to controller and slave to agent that we are we've got years of work potentially there before we ever consider renaming our branches right did we see hackfest prs for whitelist and blacklist i don't recall any i i did not create any for this one. okay there aren't i don't think there's as many instances of that right all right i guess i i created some of one of prs for changing whitelist to to allow list but yeah. okay so a little bit yeah excellent thank you very much uh we will meet again next monday all right thank you bye thank you bye everybody bye everybody, bye, everybody.